Hi, mystery writers. Welcome to Write a Killer Mystery, where we learn to make a good mystery great. And today, I want to talk about pacing, what that is, and seven different ways to help you control your pacing in your mystery. First, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon for their continued support that supports these videos and my writing. And if you would like to become a patron, um, there's a link in the description below. All right. We want to pace your mystery to sustain tension and keep your reader turning those pages. But what, what does pacing mean? Pacing really is about how your reader feels as they're reading right now in your story. So, um, mystery and novel pacing guide your reader as they read your mystery. So, you, you, the aim in pacing is directing the emotional response of your reader because you're sustaining them over the length of your novel. So, for instance, too much action, scene after scene after scene, and your reader actually gets tired. They need a break. So, you may think you're creating interest, but your reader needs emotional breaks when things slow down between the action sequences in your story. So on the other hand, passages filled with narrative description or your protagonist thinking and ruminating can feel boring if you don't spice it up with some action. Um, balancing between action Narrative, description, dialogue, and contemplation isn't as difficult as it may seem. Uh, plus, other things that impact your, your pacing, how the reader feels, are clunky languages, poor dialogue, um, badly conceived scenes, and these all draw your reader out of the story and you want them in the story and you want them feeling what's happening now. So pace is how you control keeping them there in your story. So let's talk about how you can craft your mystery story to sustain a good pace to keep that reader interest. All right. First of all, very simple, you can alternate active and reactive scenes. Um, so you control the pace scene by scene for your reader by balancing action scenes with reflective uh, internal moments. And you give your reader excitement and then recovery. And you are creating momentum by doing this, and the momentum drives your reader forward in your story. So you can use the quieter scenes to share relationship details or your character's thoughts and memories, and they can take a break from sleuthing, as it were, while your reader takes a break from sleuthing. And these scenes give readers a chance to orient themselves in the story and process their personal reactions. Uh, for example, James Lee Burke sends Dave Robichaux out fishing in between all those exciting moments in his stories. The balance between action and reflection keeps your reader from tedium or overwhelm. Either one is not a good thing for your reader. Too much of the scene pace and your reader loses interest. So the purpose of each scene is to make is to move the story forward. I know you've heard that before, but um, it, it's keeping that reader involved. So beginning writers often 
wrestle with scenes filled with description or backstory because they feel the reader needs to know everything. But what the reader wants is for you to move the story forward. So let's take a little break and talk about active scenes and reactive or sequel scenes. Um, Randy Ingermanson, the snowflake guy, uh, outlines three basic components of alternating active and reactive scenes. So let's take a look at that. What do you have in an active scene? You have a goal, a conflict, and a disaster. <laughs> and that disaster is with it's like the, the your character's goal somehow got thwarted. All right, so goal conflict disaster and then the scene following that the sequel scene um is is a response to that goal conflict disaster scene and in that scene you have the reaction uh you present the dilemma and then your character makes a decision so it's like uh, that decision is like a low key action and the decision is what, oh, now my character's made a decision and your reader wants to know, okay, now that they've made this decision, what are they going to do next? All right. So I want you to keep in mind that although these elements seem simplistic, you'll find alternating the scenes creates balance and maintains the pacing in your novel. Uh, it, it seems really simplistic, but... As you actually write the scenes, um, you'll be con connecting with your reader's feelings. It's very important. Okay, so alternating alternating scenes. And then uh, uh, planning your story helps with the pacing as well because you won't get off track and you'll know where your story is going next and where it's headed for the next plot point. A mystery is plot-driven, um, leading from the crime to the discovery of the victim. And throughout the story, you plant clues and introduce suspects. And planning helps you space the active and reactive scenes as they lead to the next major plot point in your mystery. And you'll avoid piling on action without giving your reader breathing space and then uh, just a pro tip for people who who like the discovery process of writing and they start their mystery without knowing who did it either uh, when you write your first draft in discovery mode also called pantsing writing by the seat of your pants um, Plot, uh, you can use plotting sequences as you edit to your second draft to make sure that you're keeping that balance um, and you'll and you'll create that pacing that you need inside your story. Okay, we're writer. So another thing that helps with pacing is the actual language that you use. Uh, you, you can speed up or slow down your story just by the language. Dialogue and action speed things up. So you're going to keep paragraphs short and use short words. Um, and visually, your reader actually sees a lot of white space on the page. On the other hand, descriptive passages te seem to slow down the story. If you need narrative description, break up the text into paragraphs with um, dialogue or action. And these shorter passages will help your reader keep going down the page. Even a brief exchange will liven up the pace as you're doing your narrative description because it's really you feel it's important to get all the setting details in in place um, at the paragraph level vary your sentence length so short sentences and long long sentences um, 
And if you have a really long sentence, surround it both before and after with shorter sentences. So use your language to control the pacing. All right, and then one thing that helps with pacing is conflict. Where is the conflict in your story? And we've seen um, in the active scenes that conflict is part of every active scene. All right. Um, but first, to create conflict, your reader has to care about your character. If they don't care, the conflict will, will mean nothing. So early on, you want to introduce tension um, and your character's vulnerability and their desire. What some people call the goal. So there's a character's goal and the character's vulnerability and give your reader a hint of their personality so they can emotionally connect with your character. So they're going to care when conflict comes up. All right. Setting up contrast introduces tension and prepares your reader for any obstacles confronting your character later in the story because you're going to be piling on the obstacles as the story progresses. And each subsequent conflict, whether large or small, tests your character's strengths and weaknesses. And as you introduce each character trait, opinion, and response, give your reader more opportunity to care. Caring is a key component of making conflict work in your story. So save the fight scenes and battles of wits for later in the story. First, give your reader moments to empathize and care about your character. And then as the story goes along, you want to raise the stakes. Uh, along with the character traits, your protagonist needs that goal. And for us, the goal is solving the crime. And the reader needs to know the consequences of not reaching the goal. Mystery writers have that clear goal, catch the villain, all right? Uh, but you also need to clarify what the stakes are if your sleuth fails to catch the villain. And as your sleuth tries to solve the mystery, um, smaller goals and accompanying stakes help you build conflict as your story goes, uh, especially in the long middle. And here's where you can make the situation go from bad to worse, all right? And just to add complication, what if your character gets what they want, but getting what they want puts them on an even worse position than they were before? So the character thinks they want something, it's their goal, and they achieve that goal, but actually... It's not helping them solve that mystery puzzle. So stakes build tension. So make sure you have stakes for every action that your char your main character, your sleuth, takes. Uh, when your protagonist meets an obstacle and the reader knows the consequences of failure, they become emotionally involved in the scene. Oh man, if he fails, it's going to be really bad. And then for mystery writers, another way to help your pacing is to space your clues. You don't dump all your clues in in one, one scene or one chapter. You want to space them out, drip them, as it were, throughout your story. Because what you're doing is controlling the information that you reveal um, to create suspense for your reader. Uh, and the reader's going to wonder, is this a clue or a red herring? Because your detective doesn't know, and neither does your reader. Um, especially if, if it's a clue that seems like it's going to lead straight to the villain, and then it doesn't. Um, and so just like the incremental stakes um, to raise tension... You can drip your clues. It, uh, it, for instance, plant them in action scenes 
to hide them or emphasize a clue in a sequence scene to create a false trail or a red herring. So you just plant those clues and then your detective has to deal with them. So each clue is a component. It's like a data bit. You're giving your reader information and that builds on the question of who the culprit could be. And these clues carry the reader through each chapter and sustain interest by raising questions. Okay, once once you've you've um, written your first draft, uh, the the last suggestion that I have today for uh, controlling your pacing is to read your mystery out loud uh, because now you're putting yourself in the reader's place. Notice how you feel at the beginning and the end of each scene and pay attention to how the sentences flow. If you're reading it out loud and you're stumbling over saying the sentence out loud, you may need to rewrite that sentence. Um, do you, as you're reading out loud in the reader's shoes, do you find places that are slow and you need to liven them up a bit? Um, and are you sure you're building momentum than, rather than, than just being episodic, this happened and this happened and this happened, that's episodic. Uh, building momentum is because this happened, then this happened. Um, and uh, I think really important is does each chapter raise a question at the end? So there's kind of pushing your reader to want to find out the answer to that question that happens at the end of the chapter. Okay, I think the most important thing to stress with all these different ways of approaching uh, pacing for your mystery is pacing is under your control. Your writing is the vehicle for your reader to work their way through your mystery and pacing helps them move forward and take quick breaks as they plunge ahead for the next event. Novel pacing can be one of the biggest challenges for beginning writers, and these guidelines may seem simple, what I've presented today. So, short and long sentences, action and dialogue, conflict and stakes, alternating scenes, but master writers use these same techniques. So I encourage you to use these techniques in your mystery and keep your reader engaged with by, con by controlling your pacing. All right, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Thanks for being here. Keep writing. And if you like this episode, please subscribe and click that little notification bell so you'll be you'll know when the next episode of write a killer mystery is here thank you